Today is July the 1st, 2003. Here with Officer B.W. Hargis, retired of the Dallas Police Department. Officer Hargis and I have known each other for 33 years. We met in September of 1970. And uh, Officer Hargis has not only been a friend, he's been like a father to me. And, and uh, in my years of, of sickness and, and the last few years, he's, he's been a friend, a father, a brother, and everything. Uh, Officer Hargis was on the Dallas Police Department uh, 45 years. He joined the force in 1954 and he retired in 1999. And uh, I know his wife, Miss Ruth, a very lovely lady, and, and his mother, Miss Edna, and his children, uh, and uh, they're all great people. On November the 22nd of 1963, Officer B.W. Hargis, along with Officer James Cheney, Douglas L. Jackson, and uh, B.J. Martin were the four motorcycle escort officers to the presidential limousine of President John Fitzgerald Kennedy. When they arrived in a part of downtown Dallas known as uh, Dealey Plaza, they made a right-hand turn off of Main Street onto Houston Street, went one block to M Street and made a left and started down a very steep slope. Just to the north of that slope is an area of the park called the Grassy Knoll, a, a phrase that also Hargis himself coined. Uh, as he ran up the knoll, and we'll get to that in a second. But also, they passed a seven-story orange-colored building on the northwest corner of Elm and Houston called the Texas School Book Depository. And as they begin the slope, down the slope, uh, shots begin to ring out, and Officer Hargis was certainly there. He was, the, he was on the left side with Officer B.J. Martin. He was the inside motorcycle to the limousine, about three or four feet from the back of the car. So, Officer Hargis, when you all turn the corner on uh, M and begin down, begin your, your journey down M Street, down the slope, what did you hear? What, what happened? Well, first, <clears throat> the first thing that uh, I noticed when we uh, turned the corner and was headed down the, under the triple underpass was a popping sound like uh, a firecracker. Yes, sir. And that's what I wished it was at the time. But I looked over toward the limousine, and uh, President Kennedy was bending over like that to the back of the front seat. And uh, Governor Conley was, had turned around, and I thought that Governor Conley had been shot because he had such a pained expression in his face. On his face. And then <clears throat> about five seconds later, the motorcade slowed down, and uh, as he was slowing down, the, the, the president lifted back up and the bullet hit him in the head. That's about five seconds later. And when it did, I, there was a a round plume of blood and water and and uh, body matter and everything that flew up in the air and my rode right through it. Yes, sir. And I got it on my face, my helmet, my uniform, and my motorcycle. <clears throat> you were just drenched with it more than yeah. Else. That's when I knew that that first shot was a. a was a gun, and the second shot was very, very loud, very pronounced. I knew that what it was. Officer Hargis, in your opinion, and certainly being a police officer for 45 years and uh, working homicide, robbery, traffic, and every other thing with the Dallas Police Department, uh, in your opinion, Officer Hargis, and being an expert of guns, could you tell that day in what direction the shots were coming from? Well, <clears throat> being down in that triple underpass, it's it's a it's kind of an indention, and that's why we was going down the slope. It it, it rang out. On, it seemed like it was just like in in a bell. You couldn't tell exactly where the no. sound was coming from, okay. and uh, I couldn't tell now was looking around to see if I could see someone with a gun. And uh, I guess everybody was in such a 
state that they didn't know what was happening, but when I rode up to, when I wall, uh, ran up to the triple underpass, the grass and old, yes, sir. I noticed was a bunch of people running in, in a, kind of a disorganized manner. And I thought maybe it came from there, but I, as I got up to the top, I'm, I noticed there wasn't anyone there that was trying to get away. Yes, sir. Uh, so I ran back down, got on my motorcycle. By that time, the the uh, limousine, the presidential limousine, had already taken off. I was going to the hospital. Yes, sir. Rode on the other side of the triple underpass because I, I thought maybe that someone had went on the other side, but there was no one there. So I got on my motorcycle, rode back again, and that's when <clears throat> I noticed in the back of my mind that the president head went to the left and to the front, which meant the bullet would have had to come from over his right shoulder. And I rode up to the school book depository and there's so many people around at that time <clears throat> that the police officers that, that had arrived was just now getting around the building. Surrounding the building. Mm -hmm. or surrounding the building. And, and I was already, uh, now when you looked up uh, toward the grass and oil and you dismounted your motorcycle, you, you waited for some buses to pass before you actually ran up the knoll, is that correct? Uh, buses? Yeah, some of the buses that were in the motorcade, or did you jump off and immediately ran up there? I jumped off my motorcycle and immediately ran over across the street looking for yeah. something to possibly. And I don't know what went on behind me yes, in the street. That's, that's why I'm when I rode up there, but I don't think there's any buses that... Uh, well, the reason I asked that question, some of the researchers, as you know, here, they they put so many different uh, theories together about this. Some of them said that you actually waited until the press buses and the rest of the press cars passed before you ran up the grass. No, they no. said it was at least a minute. No. And I've always had trouble with that. I knew it wasn't that long. No, it happened within seconds. Uh, I wouldn't say it's minutes. No, it's, it happened within what I, seconds. That's what I thought. Now, I was going to let clear up one thing real quickly. When you got up to the grass and over by the little retainer wall and you looked over and mm -hmm. you said you saw some people. Now, as, as the years have went by, uh, especially since 1974, a man who I knew as you being a police officer, I met him in, in, I met him the year he, he was died. Some people say he was killed or murdered. I don't know. Uh, Roscoe White was a Dallas police officer. You knew him, right? Yes, uh-huh. And as you know, over the years, all these books that have been written by many researchers, they have claimed that there was a man behind the fence they call the badge man up on the grass in Oak. No. And they say that he shot the president, and a lot of them said it was Roscoe White. Now, I was being one of the few people to know that Roscoe White was on the grass in Oak. When you saw him, what was he doing? Roscoe White was doing like I was doing, looking for someone who was going to shot him. He couldn't tell it like I couldn't. That's right. Where the shot was coming from. Yeah, that's, and, and I have tried to tell, express that to people myself, being a researcher, but you can't tell them that. And then I'll talk to the other question. So besides that, you saw no one acting suspicious. You seen nobody with a gun. No. Uh, there was a man named Gordon Arnold, I'll talk to. He was a soldier. He was home on leave on the day of the assassination. Now, he said he was on the grass in old and that he was in his army fatigue. When you ran up there, do you remember seeing him? No, I don't. Uh, okay. I don't remember seeing him. That, that clear <laughs> that uh, you didn't see him? No. Uh, did you see a woman up there, a lady running back toward the statuette, the pagoda? Well, I saw a couple of women. I don't know whether it was her or not. Yeah, that, that, was, that was a lady sitting up there on the little bench. Mm -hmm. And I think she had jumped up as the shots began. To, and she probably was running to get out of the way, get out of the way. Mm -hmm. And that's all. I don't think she had anything to. Then also, I guess right there at the corner of the wall, where the retainer wall is, going up to the steps, they said there was a man there. They called him the Black Dog Man. He had on in in one of the uh, well, two of those slides of Phil Willis, and then the film of uh, Orville Nick. You can see seemed to be an image in this black looking funny deal, and they called him the Black Dog Man. Some people even said he fired a shot from that area. 
And I say certainly if that would have happened, not only you, everybody else was right there by the limousine. Well, certainly. We would have known who it was, but it, no, so that didn't you, happen. You saw no such person at no, that time? No. Do you remember seeing uh, Mr. Zaputa, the man who filmed the Zaputa film? Him this I might have, but I just don't remember. Yeah, because you weren't looking for him. No. Certainly. Uh, the other thing we can clear up all the harder, to your opinion of, and certainly would, if somebody had been down in that manhole cover, if they'd have been in there shooting a gun, what, what is your opinion on that? Some people say that. <laughs> My opinion is there was no man in the manhole cover. If there was, we would have seen him and it would have hurt him. Okay. 